Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Murder Journal. We're just going to jump right in to today's um, review. We're just going to watch the cross-examination of the prosecution's crash reconstruction expert, expert witness. Witness. Expert, <laughs> yes. In quotations. Expert witness, and it is the Massachusetts State Trooper, Joseph Paul. Yes. Mm, it's, this is painful, Tommy. It is, this is hard, but it is a necessity. And without further ado, you know what? We forgot to do the intro, so screw it. Not Roll today. That beautiful bean footage. Okay, we'll do it. All right, and so now we're going to go. He looks miserable already. He looks scared. Thank you, sir. I have no further questions. Okay, cross-examination. Oh, Roger. here we go. <laughs> I'm getting more out of the cross than I am in direct. <laughs> so do you have any, um, do you hold any degrees in the scientific discipline of mathematics? I do not. Do you hold any degrees in the scientific discipline of physics? I do not. Do you hold any degrees in the scientific discipline of biomechanics? No. How about in engineering? No. How about in He's kinematics? holding his breath and releasing no. it all into the mic. Degree that you do hold, sir? I have an associate's degree. In what? Uh, administration of justice. You mentioned kinematics on Friday. Do you hold <laughs> any certificates in the specific area of kinematics? Yes, it's covered in the uh, basic crash investigation classes. Okay, so you took a class, in other words, correct? At multiple classes. Mm -hmm. the idea of what kinematics is. We're about to find his education right. level here in a second. About that on Friday. Yes. Define kinematics. Uh, it deals with the aspect of motion. It's a subfield of what broader field? Kinematics. <laughs> Kinematics is a subfield of what broader <laughs> do, 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 I'm not sure. Do, do. It's physics, and I don't what even What is it. physics? <laughs> <laughs> I have the Jeopardy oh. tune going. And how the rate they move and I wish you wouldn't breathe into the mic. Breath. It deals with, yeah, it deals with emotions. I keep thinking you're talking about me. So I keep looking at my mic and I'm like, I'm far away from it. The rate of velocity. Right. I mean, it's a, it's a deals with the, um, motion. It deals with forward and also deals with speed. It deals with um, travel and speed. If something's moving, it's, it also has a speed to it. Right. You think? <laughs> sure. He's not sure. What role does acceleration play in the field of kinematics? What role does self <laughs> so what role does acceleration play with the, in kinematics? <laughs> That's what he said, bro. It talks about like you just said, it talks about the speed and it talks about motion. Acceleration and <laughs> motion. Kinematics also known as the geometry of motion. <laughs> it's so yes. bad. I have, I have not heard that. Never heard that. What's the difference between constrained and unconstrained motion? Constrained and unconstrained motion. That's what I asked. <laughs> so strain savage. Motion. I can't recollect at the moment. Oh, God. Strain motion is motion on a predetermined path, isn't it? Yes. Unconstrained motion is what? When it doesn't have a predetermined path. Free movement, right? Correct. Do you remember that from your class? For the most part, we don't go that, that in depth, constrained and unconstrained. Constrained and unconstrained, not restrained. He's already, he's already corrected them, not unrestrained. <laughs> unrestrained. To model these motions, right? The motions of these points, systems of points, correct? Yes. And it includes concepts like displacement and speed, velocity, distance, acceleration, which we've talked about, correct? Correct. And it looks at how these things his values vary over a point in time a duration of time is that right yes do you actually understand 
the physics behind the study of kinematics? <laughs> yes. What did you learn in the class? Yes, we had to go over the physics part of it. <laughs> so On Friday, you said that this incident. He asked, do you understand? And he goes, yes, we went over it in class. So Correct. you do or do not understand. Based on your training and experience, correct? Yes. <laughs> and on Friday, you said you based that fact, or you based that rather opinion, on the fact that you noted a half mile an hour decrease in speed and a steering input of less than 10 degrees at some point in that reverse motion, correct? I, I said that it was consistent. That data point in general was consistent with something that you would see within data of a pedestrian striker striking something else. Um, I do go on my report saying I'm, I can't say that's definitely where a pedestrian was struck, but I, I, I'm sorry, I can barely it wasn't definitely. Sorry, in my report, I do say I can't say that is that is definitively where the pedestrian struck. Definitely, yes. Okay, so you're gonna have to. I don't know who definitely is, but I'm glad to meet him. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's okay. not where definitively, definitely was. So, you know, there's that thing called secondhand embarrassment. Oh, uh, you're right. I shouldn't make fun of. No, 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 no. That's not it. I'm like embarrassed for him because I don't know if he has a speech impediment. If he is, I think he does. If he's, I, I think he does. Or if he's intellectually disabled, because. Or if. If if it's just another accent, you know, I was I was so excited to go over this because I had to stop it. I didn't see the whole thing because I I was hurting inside from him that I I didn't even put a hat on today. I just I, I I'm a hot mess, but not as bad as this guy. This is this is pretty this is pretty painful. Definitively, that that resulted in a pedestrian strike. That that data point within the text stream data. Is what I'm talking about. Okay. That specific point, so those that time frame. Because there's a multitude of reasons why, when someone is driving in reverse, they might slow down by a half a mile an hour, right? It's what I when I say when it's consistent is because there's the, the other aspects of it is the fact that the accelerator is consistently let, strong. Let let him answer. Finish your answer. So the accelerator is is consistent at the, a constant rate, and then this just drops by half a mile. Um, and the steering wheel all of a sudden abruptly goes to the right. That's that's what I'm talking about when I say it is consistent with a pedestrian strike. That's something that you would see. It's not going to be a, a huge change of speed during this collision. You also note that at the time, it had begun to snow, correct? Yes. There would be snow on the lawn, right? Correct. There would be snow on the cars. Yes. Snow on the trees. Yes. Snow on the roadway. Yes. Snow on the roadway could impact how tires move over the roadway, correct? In a way. Um, and obviously, there are a multitude of reasons why somebody might input a 10 degree input on a steering wheel, correct? Correct. That's, that's why it's literally like it. this much. So every time okay. somebody slows down, that's what I was doing earlier. Forward, okay. And introduces a 10 degree input on the steering wheel doesn't mean they're looking to hit a hit a pedestrian correct correct um you testified that you determined the area of impact by basically following if i heard your testimony correctly basically following the debris field from the body from where you believed john o'keefe's body's final resting place was almost linearly to the furthest furthermost piece of debris that was found. I, I don't understand what that, I, that was just so lengthy. What is he asking? So he, he gave a testimony um, about they drew from where all the debris from the plastic and his shoe and in the body. Mm -hmm. uh, not to say that his cell phone wasn't underneath the body either, but anyways, okay. all that stuff is how far he flew from after being hit by the vehicle, supposedly, allegedly. Okay. In a, and he's he's saying it happened in a straight line. Is that what he's saying? It, it at a ten degree difference, 
So like you barely cranked the wheel okay. as if you were going to back up and okay. she backed up and hit him. And okay. this was the trajectory of him flying. Okay. I get it. Okay. 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 I get that right. Yes. In other words, you established what in your mind or what you were told was his final resting place and what you were told was the debris field. And you indicated that the furthermost piece of debris would basically be the area of impact, right? I, it's, it's within that line. I didn't say that is the area of impact where the furthermost piece of evidence is. Right. It's just the linear, like you, like you said earlier, it's that linear. We're throwing that path. That's the path that he traveled post-impact with the vehicle. And that's on, that is on which that fact that you stated is on which what you – it's a terrible question. <laughs> the basis for your opinion of where the area is. There you go. Correct? Yes. So the same fact. Change that. 587. It's your diagram three. If I may approach you on this verb. Okay. Yeah. Trooper. Stop you... breathing in oh, the mic. Oh, my sweet baby. Jesus, you that's can... got to be he hurting the court reporter's uh, ears. I bet you she just wants to yeah, sock him in the guess. ear. So you can see it. Your Honor, we publish uh, Exhibit 587. Yes. So did he make this diagram? Yes. Uh, okay. Sir, you see diagram three on the board. You also have it in front of you, correct? Yes. It's easier for you to refer to what's in front of you because that's a little bit further away. Just let me know. Okay. Um, the red arrows adjacent to the blue writing, where I'm highlighting right now, indicate basically the debris field that you explained to the jurors on Friday, correct? Yes. And then there's a point of an arrow. Who picked these colors to represent shit? Right there, I, yes. And the debris field ends right in the middle of that spotlight, correct? Yes. All right. So that's the area of impact that you indicated to Mr. Lally you believe occurred because of the debris field and the linear portion of that debris field going from pedestrian's final rest all the way out to that final little red arrow that says red plastic B in parentheses. Correct? Yes. Your Honor, can we uh, have exhibit 492 published for the jury, please? Okay. <clears throat> approach? Yes. This is a horrible well, diagram. Up, uh, That's what I said. Oh, fire hydrant. Yay. No, I haven't. What? Take a look just above the arrow. Do you want to put permission maybe highlight or uh, magnify the area just above the arrow? Okay. You see that? Yes, I do. Right underneath fire hydrant, correct? Correct. Ooh, there's not a piece of clear plastic uh, labeled on that diagram. It's debris. Oh, to oh, okay. Wait. I just picked that up. Like I I missed that. You see, there's not a piece where the fire hydrant's at. Uh oh, wait. right there, correct? Correct. That's another according to your scale, probably a good thirty feet from the pedestrian's final rest, correct? 30 feet. Um, yeah, that's about right. That is so let me understand this. Explain this to me because I don't science like this. I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't. Die. I love I, math. So I can. I can talk about. Oh, I don't math, math either. <laughs> I love and, it. And, and just so you know, I also don't distance. Remember. So, uh, so I was a, uh, a Mike nine in the army, which is, uh, Basically, I could train people on all the army vehicles, but I was also the accident reviewer. So what he's saying uh, is from okay. red plastic B to is basically the impact mm -hmm. and or that's where all the glass or plastic. I'm sorry, not glass. 
the where's, shoe. Where's red plastic B? It's that bottom red arrow. That this one? One? Yes, right. Right where the shit is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That his pathway went from there. Uh -huh. To the pedestrian shoe, all the way up to the final resting spot, and the glass cup was right beside him. But Alan wants to know is where in this diagram is that white piece of plastic, and why in one of their pictures? It should have been down here. And how, if that's 30 yards from where the pedestrian was, how does that fit with all the red and clear plastic on the on the side of the road? How does that fit there if impact was near the red plastic area? So their prosecution is alleging that he was standing somewhere here and she hit him going this way. Yes. Heading north. Uh, backing up. Backing going reversed. up. And you can see how. So she allegedly drove down this way, dropped him dropped off, off. And then backed, backed up, up and hit, hit him. him. At 22 miles an hour, supposedly that's what the readout says. But I and I still have questions on that too because we talked about the timeline, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, he asked uh, Proctor about that missing video footage at 12:41 of mm -hmm. Karen Reed showing back up to the house. Mm -hmm. Well, if Karen Reed showed up to the house, there's no way she could have been here during that time frame for this accident because the accident. On the on the transmitter says around twelve forty something was an accident, and that's okay. what this guy's trying to say that that's where the accident was. But we all saw the video of her backing out, nailing right. the car, and that's where they're trying to say that's where that accident happened. I'm not for sure. Okay, I'm just so, going off of what has right. transpired so far. So let's go off of this. So There's the a piece of clear plastic right at the fire hydrant, and he wants to know how did that plastic get here. But all the other plastics up above, uh -huh. uh, at least about 15 meters. Okay. And uh, did they mark that piece of plastic? Is this where the their piece ruler. of plastic was found? Yeah, that's their okay. ruler. There's their uh -huh. evidence, but he uh -huh. didn't put it in the diagram. And it doesn't oh, so fit with the diagram of, of he, think about it. All that plastic. Wait, I got a question. There. Yes. So this red mark right here that's, that's not marking the that's a piece hydrant. of plastic. No. It's only so then. All of these arrows. So the three arrows been... on the right covered the red plastic, clear plastic, and red plastic. Pedestrian right. shoes is that one to the left right, of those three. Right. But my okay. question is, so there should have been another red plastic or white clear plastic B or something indicating right here as yeah. well. And it's and not it, on here. It's not on there. And then Alan just asked how if a clear piece of plastic is at the fire hydrant 30 yards away from the pedestrian. How does all the other plastic get up here on the right you know, 10, 15 be, meters? It would all be ganged together. Because she's backing. Yeah. So her, her tail end would be that way. So why would the glass be in front of the vehicle? Uh -huh. Okay. And let's hear what he says. Okay. Thank you for that because I was confused. The furthermost piece of debris on the diagram, correct? Correct. So now your testimony changed. That this, in fact, the area of impact. No. Wait. Because it's just a piece of debris. It, it's, I'm talking about the path. You follow the path that debris filled. Debris can move and change. The debris doesn't fly backwards, does it? I'm saying you you pointed to like just the fire hydrant as the area impact where the debris, where that one piece of plastic was, saying that's the area impact is right next to the fire hydrant. Are you asking me a question? Yeah, and that's what you said, right? I'm asking you. I'm, I'm making sure I'm understanding what you're saying so I can answer the right. Ask the question again, Mr. Jackson. In fact, you indicated on Friday that your analysis of the area of impact was predicated on, based on, <laughs> the further you to break that down. Degree from the pedestrian's body that you were aware of, which is right there. Red plastic B. I said it was, it's well, I said you said earlier with the linear equation. I mean, it might have moved it over more, but it's the debris, the start of that debris, the one that is. I can't say that's definitely the point of area impact or the point of impact. I just, can't. I cannot say that is the point of impact right there. You just kind of follow the linear path. No one knows what he's saying. Path that way. Okay, so, so now your testimony is that's not the 
never, I never said that was the area impact. I said it's after that. Trooper, we were all here on Friday. Oh, <laughs> he's about to check him. He's about to check him. Objection. Sustained. Why? Look at him. Did you determine the area of impact for Mr. O'Keefe? The point of impact was red plastic B because that was the furthermost piece of debris you were aware of from the point of final point of rest from Mr. O'Keefe's body. Isn't that what you said? I don't believe that's exact my exact words. That was his words. That's, that's what he said. Your exact words. I don't have a transcript of it. I'm asking you is is that what you tried to impart to the jurors? What I said to the jury, I said after that. That's the start of that's in last that's the last point of evidence that I had. I said the air impact was probably along the roadway after that point. He I should mean, know. like before it. Not we have to walk there. towards him. I'm sorry. Wait, so shouldn't he know exactly where, or at least within very, very close proximity, where the pedestrian hit, not about because he's the reconstruction, right? So he should know, right? I would think so, and especially with all the cuts on John, that it would have left blood, like drug droplets through the snow or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and yeah. it would have led you to the impact. Like, but how does he not know? Like, I'm I'm having a hard time understanding what he's trying to say. Like, I can't comprehend what he's saying. It's it's more than just a dialect. It's like it's it's just words. It's exactly what I told you earlier. He testified uh, the other day that, right, really yesterday for me, uh, that the point of impact was just below Bravo area, mm -hmm. and that he did say that, right? Yes. I'm not crazy. Okay, but now he's trying to say that those pieces might not be an exact area. But shouldn't he know he's? But it's somewhere along the roadway that the impact happened, is what he just said, and that's why Alan's going after, or Mr. Jackson's going after him. Oh, right it's now. so it well, it, it happened somewhere on this road. Well, no shit. Okay, but supposedly, he's, but he's the allegedly it happened on that. Alleg road. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it. Right there. And he's allegedly an expert. Okay, I think you're done. Are you done? I am done now. Sir. <laughs> you're aware that there's a piece of debris. It's like taillight material right under the fire hydrant, correct? Correct. If the area of impact, which you indicated on Friday, was where this red plastic B is, you would be wrong, right? Your analysis, Big time. Your analysis would be flawed. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what I said. I said it's along the roadway. And it's going to be after that point. Okay. So is the area of impact now where the fire hydrant is? Objection. Ask it differently. Are you now indicating, because now you realize that there's a piece of debris directly under the fire hydrant, are you now indicating that that's the area of impact where John O'Keefe's body was struck? Objection. I think that is Sustained. what he's indicating. What? Let's take a look at exhibit, with the court's permission, 279. Okay. Get there. Come on, guys. 279. That's a lot of. Take a look at exhibit 279. I want to draw your attention. That's that fire hydrant piece. Oh, that, what he's highlighting now is the fire hydrant piece? Yes. Yes. Just describe it for me. Just physically, what does that look like? Uh, it looks like clear plastic with a little bit of red and the black on the top part. Okay. Maybe a <laughs> triangular shape. Is that fair? <laughs> <laughs> now, if you go back to. Court's permission, exhibit 492. Okay. And highlight just above the ruler. How would you describe that piece of material? It looks like the same piece. Does that, based on that, does that appear to be part of the taillight material that was found at the scene? Correct. Okay. Now, hey, that, pause it real quick. Are just you pause now it. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to talk about this. I think mm -hmm. somebody backed up into the fire hydrant, and that's how these pieces were. You and do. I'm just and I'm just theorizing. And I'm not supposed to do this, but how else would that piece get there? 
but the other pieces get 10, 15 meters down the road or feet. Well, the because usually when you crush a taillight, it all crumbles out. Maybe pieces will come off later on. Right. When you look at the video that the prosecution has shown so far, though, in the video footage of like the transport and her at night and driving off and everything else like that, um, it was intact. Oh, so, I, I know this. I that's, agree that's, totally with you. So what they're claim the defense is claiming is that someone else scattered these pieces. They broke her taillight while it was in the Canton PD Sally port and then scattered it. And I'm they a, probably dropped it by the it allegedly they dropped it by the fire hydrant to explain like that it's part of it, maybe, or maybe the leaf blower blew it over there. Because they did use the leaf blower. And uh, they were blowing. Yeah, but they had a foot of snow. A foot of snow. So they had to wait. And I know they used a leaf blower. I got you. But, like, for this piece to be found near the fire hydrant, but all the rest of them to be laid out somewhere else. I mean, it could have been carried by wind. It was still windy and everything else like that. They didn't secure the scene or anything else. And, and that's what's crazy. The scene wasn't secured. So we can't speculate how it got there outside of if the defense presents that. I can also tell you that if I was doing this, the ruler mm -hmm. is upside down. Can we just have a moment of silence? I'm sorry, but I'm just, I keep looking at this like usually you use the inches to find out what scattered piece and how big it is. You don't use millimeters. Can yeah, you just... don't use millimeters because that's just <laughs> not logical. Like, can we, we have use, a moment of silence for the use ruler? Bigger numbers. Can we to size stuff, right? Trooper. I'm just listen, I'm sorry. Listen, trooper doesn't math. He made that very clear. He doesn't math, he doesn't science, he doesn't engineer. So you yes, ma'am. Bless his heart. <laughs> Bless his heart. I'll stop jumping around just a second. I think we okay. Just get back to five eighty seven. Oh, sorry. The guy See, they did it again on this one too. Look Bless their hearts. We just hmm. inches are on the bottom, now, millimeters up top. Now seen in terms of that piece of plastic that appears to be from the taillight. That appeared to be under the fire hydrant, which is highlighted. Same piece. Yes. Okay. Based on that, does that change your opinion? Is that now the fire hydrant now the point of impact? No. But where is the point of impact now? It's along the roadway. I don't know the exact point of impact. Can I? So you, so you don't know the area of impact. I said the area of impact is along the roadway after the debrief. Okay. I mean, only thing it would change. Finish. Only thing it would change is maybe it's a little further away, but besides that, it's still it's a linear field. I'm not talking about like one point. It's you kind of follow the middle of the debris field, and that should be the path. Debris what? field. Okay. Where did he get hit? Along the roadway. Where along the roadway? I don't know. He just pointed out the whole roadway. You got a laser pointer. Let's go. Within, if you follow from the pedestrian on my left here, just kind of follow back. Where did it get that hit? Be, that's what I'm talking about, linear field. I can't. So, so now you've indicated an area, I can follow your, your uh, laser pointer, an area along here, correct? Yes, somewhere in there. All right, if I, if I have my, my spotlight, is that, if I leave it right there, is that about where the middle of the spotlight, about where you believe the area of impact is? It's within, I guess you can say it was within that area. I don't know definitely. There's nothing on the roadway that has a definitive point that says this is the you area. Can't say impact definitively. Right here. It's within it's within the roadway based on the evidence at the scene. Someone should introduce to him the word absolute. It's 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 the I can't say with complete absoluteness. You know, I can't say absolutely because he can't say definitively. Bless his heart. Oh. 
He's precious. That would be like you know exactly where it's at. And your conclusions, based on your full analysis, can you point me to within an area of five feet or so on the roadway where you believe the area of impact is? Is my is my spotlight basically highlighting the area that you believe, in your opinion, is the area of impact? Do you have that laser pointer? I do. Why don't we let him show you? It'd be easier for the jury to see. So what I'm trying to say is, so you follow the linear path back. Stop saying area. that. We want to know where he was hit. And sorry, I'm trying to keep it straight as much as I can. Um, shaking. Follow back to here. He is well, shaking. Being up on the stand, I can honestly say that it's kind of nerve wracking whether you're a witness. But it's possibly hold on, based hold on. on. I can't hear possible. you both. Wait, what? I mean, it's kind of nervous being up there as a witness. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to say your piece. Now you got defense I get that. trying to come I get... after you, and you're trying to. But he and... said he's testified before. So if you're an expert, an expert witness, I, I get when you have nerves. That's one thing. But he is shaking. He is shaking to where the judge is trying to tell him, can you try? try to, to hold it still. <laughs> um, follow back to here. I can't say, like, if this it definitely is, but it's possibly based on also vehicle damage to the back of the vehicle. So if you follow all the way back to here, that could be a possible area impact. A possible. So when you say that You're the expert. There, I want to be very clear for the record that what you highlighted is an area basically just to the left of an X that's on the roadway. On the bottom of diagram three. Or the lower part of diagram three. It's correct. You would use your circle almost kind of be a good area around. I'm sorry, you, need to you can use a circle around here. Just this would be around the area. Okay. Okay. So using your scale, that scale is going from full left to full right, plus or minus forty feet, right? Switch. Can't see it. It's your diagram, dick bag. So, I'm sorry. so say again. Say the question. That scale is forty feet. Going full left, full right, 40 feet. 40 feet. Uh, it's, so, it's a 10 foot scale. Okay, sorry, 20 feet. My mistake. That was, okay. Eyes are terrible. 20 feet. Thank you. All right, so if you use that scale and you estimate the jurors, I'm just going to use this X as a starting point. You estimate the jurors from this X that I've highlighted. The pedestrian's final rest. What's that number? <coughs> Doesn't have to be exact. Give me an estimate. So. I mean, it could be within 30 feet because I tell you this also on my scale, this two and three is 50 feet from each other. Is how much? 50. Okay. Five zero. Five zero. I don't think that's 50. You agree that from this X down here, the pedestrian's final rest, as the crow flies, that's probably a good 35, 40 feet. I mean, I could try to use the scale, but it is me as a scale. If you wouldn't mind. He's making him math on the spot. Oh, he yeah. moved it. Hey, that's not 50 feet. He From, he, from the two to the three is not 50 feet. I used this measured. piece of paper. But you're looking mark. up on a screen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're okay. right. Thank you. I'm not in front of the piece of paper. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I just I don't math. I don't distance. I don't measure. <laughs> I do, and it shit bothers me. <laughs> He's measuring on the diagram with the piece. Oh my god! I've never seen anything like this happen. I oh he needs the back too because he's got a he's got to add and stuff. Oh nope, he's drawn. One plus one equals seven. <laughs> I swear to gosh, if he busts it equals out 11. a finger. If he busts out a finger. One. <laughs> Look, I'll even count my toes. One. I got to pull off socks. It's a little around. It's approximately 30 feet. <laughs> so we're back to the same number you said before. Before you had to look at yep, your math issues. Uh, can you estimate 30 feet in here? Can, I ask? can you point to a place in the courtroom that looks like it's 30 feet deep? Objection. No. What? Next question. Does the court have a diagram of the... Oh, my God. I've never... Why wouldn't she allow him... This brings me back to my question would... at the first when I asked you, and I know I know the viewers here, you didn't hear the answer or the question, but I asked Mel if she felt the that this judge was biased. 
And I don't know. I know she's constrained by the law, but like with this, it's a demonstrative. That's yeah. what it's called. And for There's her, a lot. Like, Lolly hadn't even objected yet. I saw her robe in the back. She leaned forward. She was going to say, no, I don't understand why. Why wouldn't you allow it? Judge 30 feet. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that way the jurors know exactly how 30 feet yeah. looks like. I know what he was getting at. And so she said no, but that's weird. Okay. A, uh, a diagram of distances. In this There's court. other stuff that she's done. Um, you indicated um, just now. Uh, and then, okay. Pause it real quick. You know that all the witnesses could not be interviewed by the defense. You didn't That's know the, that, did you? Wait, not all of the witnesses, because they did do uh, depositions. No, they're not allowed to interview any of the def any witnesses. They had to come no. in here with a blank slate without interviewing them at all beforehand. She put that out there in her thing. But that's unconstitutional. No, that's that defies the rules of evidence. Are you sure with that? I am. Or? I am absolutely positive on this. I got to look this up. OK, I right. am. Ab that's why I. Well, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. You're fine. I was done okay. talking. I want to look this up because just in case if something is is partially correct, incorrect or 100 percent correct, I want to make sure that we get the information right. So that if we're wrong, someone's not believing wrong information. OK, I get what you're saying. To Mr. Lally's last couple of questions. That in your expert opinion. When the SUV struck pedestrian John O'Keefe. He was, quote, projected forward and to the left, to the front yard, to his final place of rest. Yes. So your expert testimony <clears throat> is that John O'Keefe was hit with the SUV and flew 30 feet. Projected, I mean, like he, I don't say he flew all the way there. He was projected in that way. He got pushed forward in that direction. Which he was rendered incapacitated landed there, you have to fly there, right? You can walk there. I mean, would you definitely fly and like literally off the ground the whole entire time or? Well, you tell me, you're the expert. I mean, he got, when we say projected, we mean he gets projected and they, they usually have a landing phase and they land and they either roll or tumble to file and rest. Okay, how far do you think he landed? How far was it until he landed of that 30 feet? I don't know. There's no indication of where his exact landing spot was. Right. Is there any evidence whatsoever? Okay, wait a minute. Did he just So he doesn't know? No, the, that's why landed? that's why Jackson asked him was like, "Aren't you the expert witness?" I know, but he and he's like doubling down, right? So I did look just for the record, um the prosecute or the defense counsel was allowed to depose and um all of the witnesses from the prosecution's case, but the ones they were not allowed to interview are the ones that were voir today, which is the defense's expert witnesses that they're bringing in or that they wanted to introduce to rebut a lot of this testimony um, that they found out about later. So that's who they weren't allowed to interview or talk to at all until the voir dire today for the first I'm trying time to find i'm trying to find where i found it at uh all the basically everything that she's given to the prosecution and also given to the defense and what they're not allowed to talk about or not allowed you know what i'm saying there's a list mm -hmm. and i i need to find that list it was on my phone but i'm not going to search on my phone right okay. now but that's Here where i read go. it at and i was like what yeah no it was the experts and then there are certain then and there were certain things that um in pre-trial motions there were things that were stipulated and things like that so yeah. but as far as like this witness and things like that he was able to depose him but i think he withheld you know you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket when you're going in a deposition you i know? mean usually you just ask a couple of questions you record it see what the response are well i've been in de depositions where they've lasted then, hours yeah I've watched Suits before. No, I'm just kidding. I've never seen Suits, so I've <laughs> oh, heard it's, it's so good. good. Okay, it's so here good. we go. Anyways, and there was no evidence that he landed or rolled, or no, rolled. There's no evidence that he landed, so he's perpetually suspended in midair. 
land where he ended up in his final. We life. all float down That's here. You. Sustained, ask it differently. Based on your expert opinion, you believe that he was projected through the air to his final rest place. I, that's not what I'm saying. But you said then what are you saying? Yeah, I don't get and it. There's no evidence that he flew through the air either. So what do you do? Drag himself? Right. Exactly. Objection. Sustain. Hey, way to go. Way to go, Jackson, on that one. You got exactly. It's like, exactly. There's no evidence that he flew or. You said on Friday that in your experience, people tend to lose objects that are not strapped to them. Is that right? Yes. In other words, get hit by something, car, truck, bus, whatever, train. And if you have something in your hand, boom, you lose it, you drop it. If it's not strapped to you, correct? Correct. How do you suppose that Mr. O'Keefe, in your opinion, held on to that glass cup that was found right next to him over the course of 30 feet being projected? Objection. I'll allow it. Do you have a theory? That's a good that? question. I don't know. I mean, it just could have been with him the whole way. <laughs> I, I don't I don't have a I don't know. I wasn't there, so I don't know how the glass stayed with his body and went with him to the fire rest. So you, I mean, it's just common sense. You have to believe that he his hand and held on to it the entire time. Being protected. I have seen people hold on to objects and fall, get hit and fall backwards and still hold on to them. Think about football. Right? That's in different. Football, You're trained to carry the football in, in a specific thing. Uh, in in a specific manner, but when you're out of nowhere, suddenly hit by a car. Yeah, but sometimes these guys get hit without even expecting to be hit. But what I'm saying is, like, if you're holding that wine glass, right, and you're just holding it around the stem, that's one thing. He might have been having it between his hands like this and Which got hit. Would, if he was holding it between his hands like that and he got hit and flung 30 feet in the air, it I... I Let's continue. Possibly, it could have been in his hand. It could have been tucked next to his clothing. Could have, you know? Did you say tucked? In I mean, like, could have been next to his body. So when he <laughs> took it, he made the glass <laughs> it was with his body as it was also flying. So I'm trying to give this guy credit. You get what I'm saying? I'm trying to give him some yeah, credit. Loud, loud, loud. Yeah. <laughs> tucked in his body. What do you do? Tuck it down his pants? Like I would have been like. <laughs> so, judge would it. There's there's a number of reasons oh why God. the glass because it also got projected with the body well, while he was holding it. I thought you said on Friday, and you just agreed with me, that people drop things when they're hit. Yes, but I think not everything, it tends to fly off. I mean, some stuff flies off, some stuff will stay on. It's, I see. It's just, it's, it's, it's not uncommon to find a piece of clothing and stuff, you know, that you find at the scene. Stuff. Like clothing, like shoes, I mean. It's like shoes and stuff like that to come off the body during a pedestrian. Snore Look at every... Snow in snowboarding, we call that a yard sale. When you lose like your hat, your mitts, and all that stuff after you wreck, we so call it a I, yard sale. I want you guys, please, people, start looking at the peanut gallery, okay? Please, because you shouldn't crash. Well, that's not what I asked. I know. I'm just saying. You like, asked me. You said why this. This is John O'Keefe's family. And trying to make sure you understand what I'm saying. No, I don't. But you know, <laughs> um, she's just strapped on. By definition, right? Yes, but it's very common for shoes to come off. What's so, that? So I don't, yeah. Yeah, it depends. It depends on where it is. And he, well, it was under his body. Okay. How do you account for that? He held onto his cell phone with one hand and held onto the cup with the other. Objection. Sustained. Uh, He's the yes. differently. The cell phone was found under his torso. Under his body. What's your theory on how that cell phone ended up flying 30 feet with him? It just, it just, it just did. Just did. And somehow, as he landed, tucked that cell phone underneath his body to land it on top. It just, it just did. That's, that's the evidence at the scene. I can't. I didn't. It just did. Is that even? It just, it just did. I'm gonna start saying that from now on, Tommy. It, it just, just did. It just did. Put the evidence there. So. Well, you didn't. Um, oh, oh. So, jurors, I've told Did that rewind, just happen? Just rewind that. I told you. He'd be, he be doing some punches. I told you. 
Like I watched this whole thing. He be throwing punches. That's why okay. I said earlier, okay. like, and Let and viewers, it. you guys weren't a part of this the the part also where I said that, uh, or maybe it was, but uh, yeah, Mister Jackson throws those rabbit punches underneath the table, and I'm I'm amazing. I held in contempt or well, sanction even worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Listen really closely, ladies and gentlemen. Stand, but don't do it. Your answer is always, I understand. Don't do it. Reverse it. It just, it just did. That's, that's the evidence at the scene. I can't, I didn't put the evidence there. So. Well, you didn't. Um, All right. Notes. So jurors, I've told you before, lawyers cannot make comments. So disregard it. Mr. Jackson, don't do it again. I understand. So you understand, but don't do it. Your answer is always, I understand. Don't yes, do it. Yes, Sean. Cell phone in one hand. Cup in the other hand. Mercy. Mercy. Objection. <clears throat> Sustained. <laughs> um, you were informed <laughs> of this incident on January 29th, 2022, at about 2.30 in the afternoon. Is that right? Yes. At the time you were working out of the cars facility, which is located on West Grove Street in Middleborough. Is that right? Yes. Uh, by the way, that's a facility that has multiple garages. Sally ports, I don't know if they're called Sally ports, but garage bays, correct? The uh, mechanic shop is are there. The mechanic shop? Yes. That is if you're if you're going to review, for instance, for purposes of reconstruction, if you're going to review a vehicle. Are the, is the vehicle placed in those mechanics bays? No, not there. That's for state police vehicles. Okay, so where are the mechanics bays? Sorry, reverse that. Where are the sally ports where you would do your analysis, your reconstruction, your uh, review of the vehicle, ex inspections, things of that nature? Um, we don't have sally ports for that. You don't have anything dedicated to that? No, the only time we would use a sally port is the crime scene would have some sally ports that they would do the document there crime scene stuff and I've gone there to do my inspections but most of our inspections are done either at the tow yard or some type of facility for that. Ultimately was this SUV ever taken to the middle rural facility? Yes it was. Uh, where was it placed? There's a uh, like a, a fenced in area inside the it's a fenced in area. <laughs> Is it outside or inside? Outside. Okay. Did it remain outside in that fenced in area the whole time? I don't know the exact time it was there for a while, then it got moved. Where did it get moved to? I'm not sure where exactly where they moved it immediately after it left Middleborough. Are you familiar with the Foxborough location? At yes. Does that have sally ports or bays for inspection and evaluation? Um, it has garages in it, but we wouldn't use them. We don't normally use those garages for inspections. Is it possible to use those garages for inspections? It is possible. Okay. Uh, it's happened before, correct? I've, I've not used the inspection in the garages. But it's, I'm going to ask you to keep your voice up and sorry. speak yes. slowly. But you know that could be used. Sorry. Sorry. You know that those bays could be used for inspections, for analysis, for evaluation, uh, if needed. Correct. Yes. All right. Um, given the, the the fact that the SUV that was being seized on January 29th uh, was being seized as potential evidence best practices would suggest that you want to get it in and out of the bad weather, the inclement weather as quickly as possible, correct? You wouldn't want to subject it to continued forces from nature like rain, wind, snow, sleet, hail, right? Mm. That would be beneficial, yes. Right. A blizzard. Uh, you're aware that Foxborough, the Foxborough location and the, the Middleborough location with the mechanics base are all closer to Dighton than Kent. Right. Dighton is where uh, both Fox Karen Burrow Reed and lives. Foxborough, Foxborough and Middleborough are both closer to Dighton than Kent. In other words, you have to pass by, I think. depending on which way you go, pass by Middleborough, pass by Foxborough to get to Kent. So from where? Oh my <laughs> God. So from, okay, sorry, from, from Dighton? Where the, where the vehicle was seized. In yep. All going, all going toward Canton, you pass by either Middleborough or Foxborough to get to Canton, correct? I don't believe you'd pass by Middleborough to get to Canton, but you've passed by Foxborough. All right. Um, 
the car was not taken to Foxborough, was it? No. As a matter of fact, the car was taken basically double the distance all the way to Canton to that Sally Port, correct? Jackson. Do you know that? Is that double the distance? I don't know the exact distance. I just, I know it was in Canton. And you know which part? <laughs> From Dighton, yes. Right. Um, and you're Drink up, buddy. Because you've been to the scene, assuming, correct? The 34th Parity. Yes. Yes, I have. And you've been to Canton, uh, PD. Yes, I have. Uh, you know that those two locations are about three, four minutes apart. Yeah, I can say that. Um, when you started. Your Where's he going with all of this? Trying to find out why they took it to Canton and not oh, okay. somewhere where it's closer away from the Canton PD from having their hands on it. Got it. Uh, you were told that there had been a crash, correct? Yes. You testified that to that at the state court grand jury in this matter. Is that right? That you've been told in advance this was a vehicle pedestrian crash and you were asked to analyze it, right? Yes. You wrote your report that it was a single vehicle collision involving a pedestrian and you were, quote, assigned to reconstruct that collision, correct? Yes. So when you began your analysis to Paul, you were told conclusively by the lead investigator, Michael Proctor, that the deceased was hit by a car and your job to was re your job was to reconstruct it. Is that right? Objection. Okay, so there are lots of parts to that. Break it down. Yeah, that was way compound. You were told by Michael Proctor to reconstruct this incident. Objection. So were you told that by Trooper Proctor? I was not. Okay, next who, question. Sure. Who were you told, who were you given your, your instructions by? Instructions for what? Oh my God! I wasn't getting instructions to reconstruct. It's just I was assigned to it. Right. Well, who a... assigned you, dumbass? <laughs> Fuck! Who assigned you to it? I I talked to my sergeant at the time. He he gave me the phone call. And you were told what? Some basics about that that reconstruction that the, the event that you were asked to reconstruct, correct? Yes. The information that that you were told came from the case officer. Is that right? What's who's the case officer? Oh, sweet the baby Jesus. Information that this was a pedestrian vehicle incident as opposed to motor vehicle, motor vehicle incident, pedestrian bicycle, motor vehicle, motorcycle. You were told it was a motor vehicle pedestrian incident that you were asked to reconstruct, correct? Yeah, I was told that, yes. All right, and you had to be given some basic parameters uh, of what that incident, how that incident occurred. The car was going in reverse. Got a damaged tail light, things like that. Some basic stuff. Yeah. What I'm asking is, I'm trying to get to is who gave you that information? Where did it come from? Yeah. That the car was traveling in reverse. Like which part of the information you, you oh, asked sweet. me the Who told now. you about it? It's you not rocket science. Information from multiple I'm sources. getting mad. Remember, associate we'll give you a summary. administration yeah. of justice. Yep. Paper pusher. Focus. Summary of the, the whole entire of what? Of the event that you were asked to reconstruct. Oh my fucking god, dude. It was passed down. Um when I got to the garage, they that I need a t shirt that says either I'm with stupid that then gave me the summary, like that I can remember. Uh, do you think he's being obtuse on purpose? Yes. yes. Or do you think he's I think just he's dumb? doing this on I think he's doing this shit on purpose because but, there's no way you could be that dumb. No, there's just absolutely. And I've seen box of rocks yeah. in the army. Yeah. But not like this. Like, I don't like Jesus Christ. And this is where and I'm, I'm sorry, getting... guys, if you're religious and that just offended you. I really mean okay. that. I, I don't mean to offend anybody, but like, I'm surprised the judge isn't getting upset over this. Just answer the fuck freaking. I'm going to wear a t shirt that says, I listen to dumb people. Oh, yeah. During I'm, this court I'm, case. And I, Yes. Um, I was told that it was a pedestrian crash. I knew it was a Boston police officer involved. Who told you? Names. Um, Names. And that it was traveling in reverse. That's that's all they had. Okay. What I'm asking is, that's great. Thank you for the summary. <laughs> Who gave you that summary? <laughs> I don't know if it was defending anybody from the get-go. 
that I that was like I talked to. Damn, that's his go-to word. Definitively, that, like, that was that was the person. Uh, there was multiple people going around. So you just um, take assignments from random um, people. I think I talked to Trooper Zach Clark. He, he was doing the crime scene. I think he was more Zach Clark. He was the crime scene photos at the time. I, I knew him from past crashes. Um, That's who you he just said this is the vehicle, and I think he kind of gave me a little bit of a lowdown on what the vehicle was. Okay. So he just said lowdown in court from a photographer from the crime scene photographer. That's who. Like everybody has a chain of command. You are assigned this from somebody. So basically what he's going with from what I gathered, what he just said was, well, you know, it was just passed down. Someone handed me a phone. It was a whole bunch of people telling me what to do. I don't know. I just take my orders from everybody and the janitor. Is that what you got? What she said. Okay. My question is this. When you got that... I, lowdown, you're absolutely right. <laughs> he gave me information, yes. Right. When you got the lowdown... Um, you were <laughs> the lowdown? Was involved. Never heard that you in the court. I got the 411. Not from an expert. Ultimately led to the death of the pedestrian. Struck the pedestrian in reverse, correct? Correct. Right. And you were assigned specifically to try to reconstruct that incident. Yes. Have you ever heard of the phrase confirmation bias? <laughs> I know the phrase, yes. You know what it means? I can't definitively say what it means. Stop saying it's definitively because you can't say it. And then trying to find evidence to fit that conclusion. Does that sound right? If you say yeah. so. If you say so. If you say so. You're not witty, bro. You noted in your direct examination that there were scratches on the passenger side rear bumper of the Lexus, correct? Yes. How exactly were you able to scientifically determine that any of those scratches were from an incident on January 29th, 2022, as opposed to any other time? I didn't have anything else on the time. Is that, that those scratches happened prior to this collision? I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't have any information that those scratches were caused from a prior collision. And so when you try, when I looked at the evidence, it was, I knew it was in the that same area, of the right red tail light. Um, so when I looked at it, it didn't quite fit the pedestrian thing. So thing, when you showed thing. me the video, or I saw, I saw the video like a year ago on Court TV, I said, that's, that could be. You asked the question. So next, I keep did. going. He's, he's answering. I'm next, No, to he's not. You guys Go ahead. scientifically Hold thought on. the scratches were. Hold on. Ask Sorry. your question, Mr. Jackson. Did he say he saw it on Court TV? Court TV? Yes. Bumpers get scratched in myriad ways, correct? Correct. Get scratched in a grocery store parking lot, right? Yes. Shop by, by trees on the side of the road. I mean, it's all sure. over court TV, I mean, I of course. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of ways <clears throat> that a car can get a scratch, correct? Correct. My question is, do you, as you sit here, do you have any scientific evidence that those scratches occurred on January 29th at approximately 12.45 a.m.? It's a yes or no. What do you mean by scientific evidence? Oh, so oh. Fuck me. Do you, <laughs> this is even brutal. You know I watched this yesterday, and now I'm having to watch it again. Like, this is brutal. Like I said earlier, the video seems to appear that's what it looks like it, that could have been from. Well, you said on Friday. Let's talk about those scratches for a second. Yeah. When you testified Friday, you were pretty clear. You said that... I can find it exactly. He's quoting you. He is quoting you, sir. He is quoting you. It is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Take that deep breath. Have some water. Sure. I'm going to fast forward while he's looking, while he's looking, while he's looking. The Lexus. Okay. Okay, here we go. I may have just a moment, Your Honor. Sure. Oh, shit. Uh, just 
I miss it where you before you used to be able to hit a button, it would just go forward like two seconds, three seconds, and I don't have that button. Quote, the dent and scratches for his hand could be those are consistent with striking the Lexus. Remember saying that? Yes, on the tailgate. Okay, so. What is it, a pickup truck? That's a tailgate. You said from his hand. The bumper? Or are you talking about the, yes, the hatch? Okay. But a tailgate. Then are those the same scratches you're talking about in terms of the bumper? No. <gasps> He's saying no, Tommy. What are you talking about the scratch inside the bumper that we've been talking about? Correct. Okay. No. Okay. Is there any way to scientifically date a scratch? No. If you go out in the parking lot right now, even as, a, as an accident reconstruction, if you walk out in the parking lot right now and look at a Toyota Camry sitting there, it's got a scratch on it. No analysis that you could engage in to date that scratch picture. Jackson. So you can ask it differently, Mr. Jackson. It's the leading. way that you could, on, in, in, in general, look at a scratch and say, that scratch is from such and I mean, such. It's case. not leading. Jackson. Where is it? I'll allow it. Anymore. I'll allow it. You, you cannot say you can I mean, you can look at evidence and shows that it it may have been older than what the newer evidence would be but there's there's no way to say it, that specific date and time and that a scratch would came from right. he got one right he got one right it's possible that any or all of those scratches on the lexus could have predated january 29th correct yes no what what the ones that are on from the tail light and the other parts of it. Scratches anywhere on the car. Depends on what you got to pick the other scratches. You got to show me other scratches on the car. I'm saying it's possible since you can't date the scratch. It's possible that any or all of those scratches could predate January 29th. Right? Yeah, it is. It's 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 easy. You you're being pretty broad on your scratches here. I, I'm not being broad. Let me ask it a different way. Let me ask it again. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not. Is it possible. Any or all of the scratches noted on that car predate January 29th? Any and all of the scratches? See, that's see, I'm saying you're being pretty broad. Any and all scratches on the car Can that, question? If that it predate. Possible. Objection. I don't know every single scratch on that car. I could mean. Oh, overruled. So if, can you answer that question? No. Oh, my God. <sighs> yeah. Testify that you noted glass on the rear bumper of the SUV, correct? Yes. And you said something about that glass being coming from the cup. Correct. You also but, said that you did not see anything on that SUV that could be the source of those glass pieces on the bumper, right? Yes. When you did your reconstruction and your analysis, were you informed that none of the glass pieces, not one of them, be matched to the cup. I don't know anything about the that I don't know, I don't know that. So if you knew that the glass pieces on the bumper do not match the cup, does that change your opinion? It should, yeah. about that glass? Can you answer that question? I cannot. What? You can't answer the question. It's it's what was told to me as evidence. Got it. Uh, it, then it's not evidence. Scene. Oh my God. As crime scene that was there, it says it's glass from the cup. When I did my, my initial inspection, that's what it was on from. That's not what you just said. You said that's what was told to me. Yeah, by crime. No, yeah, I can see you. By crime scene. By while I was at my inspection. Wait, what? It was told to me by the crime scene when I was at my inspection, at the initial the inspection. Crime scene talks? So what you meant by that's what was told to me is the crime scene talk to you. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, Tommy, what is happening? This can't be right. This can't be real. Crime scene say anything else? <laughs> you are muted, Tommy. I can't hear you. 
Hey, he be busting balls. Mr. <laughs> Jackson oh be busting balls. <laughs> Did Crime Scene tell you anything else? Like, <laughs> Jesus, man. Jesus. Like, there's no mercy, bro. He's savage. <laughs> you just, you, I don't know what else you want me to say. Why are you asking him? It's you. <laughs> You're the expert witness. Like, why, why is it up to Mr. Jackson to tell you what to say? I don't know what you want me to say. Like, I almost can't even finish this. I can't. It's got to get better. No, it doesn't. It's <laughs> going to get worse. That's why I said I've already been through this once, and now I'm having to go through it again with you. We need to do this shit live. Yes. I was trying to yesterday. And in fact, those last pieces don't match the top. That change your opinion? Objection. It should change his opinion because it it's. your opinion in any way if you knew that the glass pieces do not match the top? Objection. I'll allow that. Can we answer that question? No. I'm sorry. No, it, no, I don't. I don't. It's a glass from a cup. It's a glass. It's not, it doesn't belong to the vehicle. Right. It's glass. But if I told you it didn't match <laughs> that cup, what? Your opinion. Objection. Does that change your opinion? Are we talking which cup? Are we, we never established. There's, only, about. there's only one glass we're talking about. We've been talking about. Cooper. You said that cup. One at the from the from the scene. Okay. That cup. I'm talking. I just want to make sure that we're on the clear path here. Yeah. On the clear what we're talking about. Absolutely. Okay. Really sure. All I said uh, it's it it's found next to John O'Keefe's body in the snow at twelve at, at uh, thirty four. <laughs> <laughs> He's breaking down dummy style. Yes. Okay. He had to Barney that's style it. When I say cup, that's the cup. He's getting mad. Okay. Would it change your opinion? If I told you that the glass pieces on the bumper don't match that cup. What's my opinion on it? All I said was glass from a cup. That's the only opinion I had. It's glass from a cup that was on a bumper. Are you saying a cup? A cup. A cup. It's not glass from the car. That's That was my opinion on it. I didn't never said it matched to the scene. You did I never said that in my thing. I said it's glass from a cup. In my thing. Glass from a cup. Okay. Um, well, all righty then. So he negated that it's John O'Keefe's glass. It's safe to say you didn't do any testing to determine the forces necessary to shatter a taillight on a 2021 Lexus 570, correct? I did not do testing. Um, Your report indicates, we talked about this a little bit, I'm gonna go back to something we talked about earlier this morning. Your report indicates that John O'Keefe came to his final resting place about seven feet from the roadway, and that's what you based your diagram on, correct? Yes. Who but told you that number? I measured it from a diagram. You should say that again? I <laughs> measured it from the diagram. <laughs> okay, well- did you hear? Did you hear Jackson pause, like, because keep in mind, uh, okay, let's see. A taillight on a 2021 Lexus. First off, Lexus. he didn't do any. I did not do testing. Um, Just punch me in the face now. This is the part that gets me right here. Your report indicates, we talked about this a little bit. I'm going to go back to something we talked about earlier this morning. Your report indicates that John O'Keefe came <clears throat> to his final resting place about seven feet from the roadway and that's what he so when you were looking at when you were explaining the map and the distance to me before he it came that it was his final resting place was 30 feet mm -hmm. right that's okay. from the fire hydrant if you got from it. the fire hydrant okay okay yes from the fire hydrant but okay. the way the schematics works it's only seven feet 22 miles is seven feet. And based your diagram on, correct? Yes. Who told you that number? I measured it from my diagram. You should say that again? I <laughs> measured it from the diagram. Okay, what I'm asking is how did you get on the diagram? In other words, <laughs> oh. you, you fucking turd. God damn it. Wait, I, he, I was told by Lieutenant was it Gallagher, Paul Gallagher, Captain PT. 
he told me this is where the body was found. Okay. So I used my devices to mark that location. Okay, but, but before... <laughs> my devices to mark that location <laughs> on Google. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> and an upside down ruler. <laughs> I measured in millimeters. It was seven millimeters from the bumper. Um, <laughs> on my picture. <laughs> Did Lieutenant Gallagher tell you that the first officer oh, shit. estimated his body at being approximately 15 to 20 feet from the roadway? No. <laughs> of course not. Of if course he had not. told you that, that it changed your diagram? Objection. Oh. I was just, he told me <laughs> this is where he's found. I marked that location. That's all that was. That's and not his question. Basically, every other piece of item. Sorry, that's a terrible question. Every other <laughs> item you marked based on. He's trying to dummy proof oh, this. You gotta say, like. Body came to us, correct? Yes. Yeah, and that was by Lieutenant Gallagher just pointing at the ground, saying he's about here. Correct. Oh my God. Any conviction in which this man's testimony was involved needs to be there revisited a member of the team that was out yes being shown the this is another one that i don't think should have a job anymore because yeah. you are not an expert witness when you didn't do your own investigation you uh, took from everybody else from, i mean what do you mean team canton pd who was, yeah, whoever was there when, who was there with you and you started doing your your measurements etc uh, uh, to Lieutenant Gallagher, that too. Just you and him, and uh, myself, and uh, the, I was training. <laughs> Just you and him. There. No. Training a trooper at the time. Yes. Okay. Yes. He's imparting his ex. I, my mistake. I assumed that there were several people out there. Just you and Lieutenant Gallagher. Yes, that's why I, I was confused by the team. All right. Uh, and again. And a trainee. Didn't tell you that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. No, I don't think so. Um. I would ask to be cross trained if he was my trainer <laughs> we did on a dis different that. discipline. Now I would. I'd be probably during the time frame. I'd be like, "Oh man, this guy really knows his shit." But now I'd be like, "He doesn't know yeah. shit." And you indicated in your report that the member members of the search team located a single Nike sneaker that was noted on your report. Is that right? On Correct. Your diagram, right? Yes. You also indicated that quote in the same area. Hold on. Pause that. Plastic pieces and, and and go back. Did he just say that they found the the sneaker or Canton PD cert, found it? The cert team. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead and hit play. One clear piece of plastic of a tail light was discovered. Yes. So your report is clear that in total, the items discovered by the cert team on January 29th were a shoe, right? Yes. A glass partial glass cup broken, correct? Well, I, it was that on there. I can't remember if that's on their diagram or if that's what I was told at the scene. But yes, sure. yes. You knew that a cup was found. Yes. So you were told a cup was found. Yes. And three pieces of plastic, two red, one clear. Yes. Not then, five pieces of plastic, correct? Correct. So where did the extra pieces come from then? You, did, you then measured those items. Is that right? I didn't. What do you mean measure them? Um, like measure at them the relative to John O'Keefe's final. Yes, I used their I used their report to place those items onto my diagram. So and that, I'm gonna to get to that question in just a second. I want to make sure that we walk through it sort of methodically. You then use some <laughs> calculation, some some tool or something to measure distances. Like, like a ruler? Like, like a millimeter millimeter ruler. <laughs> Five fifty cord. A, and I'm going to measure from there and go seven feet to where she's found. I used the stringy string. <laughs> with beads. Right? <laughs> yes. Who told you where the pieces were found? They were in um, Lieutenant Tolley's report. He he put measurements in his report. Okay. And. You noted that the shoe was nine feet. Oh yes. my God! In your diagram. Correct. 
You know, Quit suck her. starting the fucking mic. <laughs> like for real. Quit right. suck starting the fucking mic. Right? Yes, yeah, so it was. They basically said it was. I was found next to him. Right. Yes. Uh, a piece of red plastic, seven feet from Jonathan's body. Correct. Correct. A clear plastic piece, ten feet from Jonathan's body. Right. Yes. And a red plastic piece, twelve feet from Jonathan's body. Correct. Correct. See how close all this stuff is. Yeah. What part of his body were you measuring from? <laughs> uh, like center of mass. So he's six foot two. Yes. <laughs> Did Lieutenant Gallagher tell you where his center mass was? No, I measured from. He just said he was here, so I tried to put like where his head, where his feet, and try to measure the middle between those two. So ultimately, because Lieutenant Gallagher <laughs> was not at the scene when he was found, Lieutenant Gallagher had to sort of guess where the body was found, correct? Objection. Sustained. You had no photographs of John O'Keefe in place, correct? Correct. There were no establishing shots, there were no perspective shots, correct? Correct. There were no relative shots, meaning this is relative to that. I can measure that and figure out the distances, correct? What, like from the, from a picture? Yeah. So, you know, you know how that is done in science, right? You, you want to find out a relative position of something. So you take two, three, or four shots. You know that something is never going to move, like, I don't know, flagpole. You can measure from there. Sure. You get cross coordinates, right? Sure. Left and right, and where the two coordinates match, that's where the eye is, right? Correct. None of that was done, right? From, from the pictures? None of that was done to do your measurements. I use, like I said, I use the measurements from, I use, I measured on my diagram in itself, and I measured from those points off my diagram. Right, but the, the starting point was a guess, wasn't it? Objection. Sustained. Did you Why? sort of guess at where you thought John O'Keefe's body was? I didn't, I didn't guess where his body was. Did you guess? At Were you side? there? I know that's the Objection. thing. That's what I'm saying. Were you there? You were not, not there during the time of the body. So yes, you guessed. Like you're an idiot, man. I did not guess. You <laughs> report that you Google mapped Miss Reed's path of travel. Well, let me ask you a different question. If I could withdraw that question with court permission. Yes. Um, <clears throat> your diagram. has all those arrows pointing at specific locations. Very, very specific, very thin arrows that point, correct? Yes. If you start off with an incorrect assumption about where John O'Keefe's body was, right? Hypothetically, if okay. you were to start off with an incorrect assumption where John O'Keefe's body was, every single piece of, every single item that you note on that diagram would then be off as well. Objection. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess hypothetically, depends on how off you want to be. <laughs> how what? off you want to be. Yes. <laughs> hypothetically. Hypothetically? <laughs> he just wants to use big words now. Uh, Miss Reed's path. I mean, that's your buddy right there. On January 29th. Based on. <laughs> You're like, no. To be, quote, it, it's likely. To, and, and you said uh, that it's quote it's likely that the two events, meaning the triggering events, occurred at the same time the Lexus was at 34 Fairview at the time of the collision. Correct? Yes. The first triggering event is what? Is it a three point turn or a U turn? I, I thought I heard you say both. I guess it would be more. I mean, three point turns essentially. I guess it's a three point turn. Okay. Yes. Well, did you say U turn on Friday? I could have sworn I heard that. It could have been a U-turn. I mean, it's still turning around. So you had to make a U-turn when it's a three-point turn or not, but it's still. Okay, but not to be picky, but it's sort of my job. Okay. <laughs> Traveling in one direction. Turning, right? Turning the wheel. Never I still believe she's got shark eyes, dude. Mm -hmm. Battle, she's a three -point turn scary fires. looking. Oh, amen. Stopping, changing gears, moving backward, stopping, changing gears, using the steering input, and then moving on. Correct? Correct. Well, those are two very different maneuvers, right? You agree? Mm -hmm. It's 
in a sense, I was trying to say she made a U-turn. Like you can say when says they made a U-turn. It's a three-point turn. They're still making a U-turn. U-turn is not a three-point turn, though. She literally had to make a direct U-turn. I just want to clarify that. A U-turn mm -hmm. is one single the movement. The trigger shows a three-point turn. Two-point turn is where you get stuck and you have to back up, and that's still a three-point turn. So one and you two when you back up and threes to go. I think the trooper is just trying to say she had to turn around. So why doesn't he just say turn around? No, because the trooper had to reconstruct this whole crash uh, from the the tell all box. That's right. Mm -hmm. But yet, it's you get what I'm saying. So he's trying mm -hmm. to clarify: was it a U turn or was mm -hmm. it a three point turn? It's a right. you get what I'm saying. There's two different things. You didn't say that. You said U turn. So are you changing your testimony from Friday that it was a three point turn, or could it possibly have been a U turn? The three point turn. Because you have evidence of the starting, stopping, changing gears, reversing, stopping, changing gears, turning. That's correct. Okay, so mm -hmm. You said you turn. That was inaccurate. Objection. How was that was the objection. That objection. Sustained. Uh, I don't. Okay. Let's get back to the path of travel when you began your your analysis. How did you know what the Lexus's path of travel was that day? Um, I got the, the directions from um, Trooper Proctor. Mm. What did Trooper Proctor tell you in terms of the path of travel specifically? Starting point and an ending point tell you the exact path of Lexus travel. No, they just, all I got was mostly just the addresses. Okay. So if you've got a two points on a map and Trooper Proctor told you Lexus traveled from point A to point B, there are multiple ways to get from point A to point B. You agree with that, right? Yes. You picked one of those, right? The path of travel includes <clears throat> three ways, et cetera, right? Yes. But as you sit here, you don't know what her actual path of travel was because it could have been something different, right? True. It could have been something. That's why I, that's why I gave a range on my diagram. This is the key element. Now, What's this? Scientific evidence to establish what her actual path of travel is, or did you just guess at the path of travel? I got the addresses from Trooper Proctor. I put oh. them into the thing, and the pos and the, one of the possibilities of 36 miles, and that was after looking at all of them, at 36 miles is a possibility. Right, understood. So we got it from Proctor. Okay. That's one possibility, and there's 36 miles. Right. Mm -hmm. One route of travel, right? Correct. There are other possibilities, right? Yes. So between and among the possibility that you picked and the other possibilities, you just sort of have to guess. Mm -hmm. And there's no science to it. You just said, I'm going to pick that and put it in my report, right? No, that's not how that works. Okay. Why don't you tell me how that works? <laughs> Our odometer mileage on the car from. Again, you picked the route. And time we had the vehicle shows 36 miles so when i plugged those addresses into google one of the poss it came up as 36 miles as a possibility and you knew that there was another route of travel to the same location correct what do you mean there were <laughs> alternative routes of travel to the same two points from from and to the same point, correct yes yes you know, he'd get off the stand faster if he was just location data answer quickly and direct. Cell phone to determine the exact route of travel, correct? I don't know. I don't have access to the cell phone extractions. So that answers my next question. You did not even attempt to do that, did you? No. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you did to attempt to analyze the key cycles for the Lexus in order to determine placement of that vehicle. You just talked about that with Mr. Lauper, right? Yes. I want to be clear for the jurors because most people have probably never heard of key cycles. A key cycle does not have any location data associated with it whatsoever, does it? Correct. It just shows you when a vehicle is turned on, the ignition is on, and off. That's one cycle, correct? No. What? Tell me what, what I've got wrong. Key cycle, the car doesn't have to be turned on. Take that again. It could go from off to run, the engine does not be started too off. Understood. Uh, so if 
turns on, well, every single ignition. I wish it would stop hitting the fucking mic. That's absolutely stop breathing in it. Stop hitting it. That gets recorded as an ignition cycle. Right. So a key cycle can be an ignition cycle. But it doesn't have to be an ignition cycle. It also can be just a, turning the, the sort of accessory on, right? The key cycles to turn the accessories on. All right. But it does okay. The I don't mechanic. So I'm I'm a little confused here, and this is where I am lost. What is the difference? Okay. So what are they talking about? You going in, putting your key in your ignition, and just turning the radio on. Mm -hmm. will count as a keystroke and a you key can turn cycle. it off would be that keystroke the, the box the recorder records uh -huh. that as a oh, so that's a key on a mission yes that's a key okay. cycle i call it a keystroke i'm sorry that's okay uh, so, but that's yeah so right. it will show that in the keystrokes that that is a cycle that it went on it doesn't okay. mean that the engine was running it doesn't okay. say that. It just it says just when it's on it was turned. and when it's turned off. Yes, that's all that means. And the ignition cycle is when you start the engine. Yes. Okay. And is he saying one can be independent of another? Like he, if you that's what he's saying. He's saying that it could. It won't tell you. It's just going to say this thing was on, and this is the time it went off. That's all. My question was where we started with this conversation. Is Thank you. That's what he's trying to say. Data on it whatsoever. Correct. All right. So when you drive your car, you walk out, get in the car, turn the ignition on, start to drive, get your location, turn it off. That's one key cycle, right? And one ignition cycle. But the, and I'm going to use the word key cycles because you use the word key cycles in your report. That's, I mean, that's what we're talking about. I'm using that because that's what that's how the trigger was read. That's how what? The triggers were read on the text stream. That's how they read them, key cycles. By key cycles. So yes. I'm going to use that phrase, key cycle. Okay. Text stream. That's what it's called. I call it keystrokes. It's a, it's it's a, a text stream. Cycle. It doesn't have to be on. So you mean the, the engine doesn't have to be turned off? Correct. Right. Okay. But if you're seeing triggering events, I'm trying to be tricky here. Seeing triggering events, the car's in motion. What does that tell you? Ignition's on or off? The ignition is on. Right. That's what I'm getting. To. But it has no location data associated with what whatsoever. It could be here. It could be in Wyoming. The the, the car wouldn't know the difference. It's not going to report the difference to you, correct? On the key cycle, correct. on just the key cycle. The key cycle does not give out locations. Say that again. The key cycle does not give a location. Right. So your analysis. What is all of? Is what's the point of all of this? From a known key cycle that you can. He's getting to it. And then work backward from there to try to figure out where the car was on a particular ignition cycle or key cycle. Correct. I didn't use the key cycle to put it back. Say that again. I did not use the key cycle to place the car back in its location. The key cycles were. All I got from the key cycles is that they were that they occurred close within proximity to the time we've had the vehicle, not basically saying that this was the location based off the key cycle. Well, let's look at exhibit 591. With the course 591 exhibits so far. 591 exhibits. At least. At least. You testify on Friday that. This is a copy of, of the exhibit that was put in 591. This is part of your report, correct? Yes, it is. And this is a chart that shows when this arrow, that arrow indicates top and bottom where your testing occurred, correct? Yes. And if you move over to the left, that is key cycle what? 1164. So where's 1163? Well, where's 1166? You stated in your report that there were, quote, two triggers recorded on odometer 12629 and key cycle 1162, correct? Yes. These events were prior to the testing triggers on odometer readings 12665 slash 12666. 
and at key cycle 1160. Right? Yes. Okay. That was the internet what saying, yesterday. What saying in that, in that it was YouTube. Is, uh, the triggering events were at 1162, going in, in reverse uh, in order. 1162 comes before 1164. They're numerical. Is that right? Yes. Every single key cycle just tags another number on top of it, right? There's no formula. Correct. After one comes two, after two comes three, four, five, six, and then move on, right? Yes. So by the time you got the vehicle, there had been 1,164 key cycles on the history of that car, correct? Correct. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and you knew, and you put in your report, the triggering events that you see under 1164, those are yours. What's going on? It was happening all day yesterday and today. California internet. No, it was happening. It wasn't on true and crime. Or, uh, long, long crime. crime. Yeah, it, it was on. Yes. Uh, I watched this all day yesterday. So did I. Yes. Well, no, not all of it. Stated wow. in your report. Hold, let me finish. I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. And the triggers that occurred while to. testing was 36 miles. You just said that, right? Yes. And the key cycle difference was exactly two key cycles, right? Yes. 1164. 1163, 1162. That's the triggering events, correct? That's correct. You also reiterated in your report in paragraph 23, 24, 26, and 29, and also in this exhibit uh, in your CARS report, that the triggers occurred at key cycle 1162, right? Yes. You were assisted in your CARS report. I think you mentioned Trooper Zach Clark. Is that right? Yes. Trooper Proctor assisted. A certain degree, correct? Yes. Um, Trooper Lorini, Carol Lorini, is that right? Yes. I still don't know where also he's going with all Sam, of this. Oh, sorry, Sean Good of Canton PD assisted as well, correct? Yes, in a sense. He's naming all the people who helped us. Did they all read the report before it was finalized? And they all read the report. No. Did you have any supervisor read no. the report before it was finalized? Yes. And he agreed with the assessments in the report? Yes. Sure. Um, so in summary, everybody that read the report and you, who authored the report, believe, and it's reflected in that report, that Key Cycle 1162 contained the two triggers that you're talking about, right? Yes. That's the three-point turn, I guess now a three-point turn, right? Changing direction, and then yes. the reverse at 24 miles per hour, correct? Correct. 24 and miles per hour. And testify to that exact thing under in a, a blizzard? The state, the state grand jury. Correct. Yes. In the snow. Wait, hold on. I need the text streams. On the yeah, on the, the key cycles. Not in grand jury. Okay. Um, testified to it on direct examination on Friday and again this morning. Yes, correct. Where are we going with this? If your testing occurred at key cycle 1164, that means you turn the engine on, the ignition on to start your testing, correct? Correct. And that triggering event that we see up there at 1164 initiated your testing, is that right? Yes. All right. So that 1164 is where you, that's where there's no more unknowns, in other words. Like you know exactly where the car is, who's in the car, who turned the car on, and what the triggering events were and what they, they reflected. Because you did it, correct? Correct. It's you. Yes. So that would be the cornerstone, basically, of your entire analysis of key cycles. Say again? The cornerstone. In like, other words, the one known that, that is <laughs> immutable. Is What's a cornerstone? For your <laughs> is that right? You Correct. know what makes it worse? Is that right? They're in fuck freaking Massachusetts. Cornerstone. Um Masons. Jeez. History, people, history. I'm gonna allow the question. Um yeah, that's when that's when we, the car was in state custody. All right. Um so starting at eleven sixty four and counting backwards. Oh god. You started your testing. You know that the SUV had to be started, the ignition had to be turned over, and it was driven to the Sally Port in Canton at 5.31 p.m. from a tow truck on January 29th, correct? I didn't know that. 
You did or did not? Did not know that. Okay. Assuming that the car had to be started and put on put on a tow truck, that would be key cycle. What? I don't know how. I can't. I can't speak to the fact that that required a key cycle at that time. I can't. Hear you. I can't. I can't speak to the fact that it would record a key cycle at that time. Okay. If the car was turned on and driven onto a tow truck, would that be a key cycle? I don't know because these keys record different ways. So I can't what? speak to how or why it did not record on there. All I can speak to is that those are the key cycles. The odometer mileage is. More, is more what I was going after on this whole thing. On this whole thing. Said, unequivocally, when a car is turned on and then turned off, there's a key cycle. I said when the car, without the ignition on, that's a key cycle. Right. That's correct. That's what I yeah. mean, when it's turned on, when the engine turns on. That's, that's the definition of what it is. I can't speak to why, not, why it didn't go on, why it did not record. Well. <sighs> hmm. Tommy. It, yes. it, Let's talk about the ignition cycles. Okay. Before eleven sixty four. Okay. Okay. Obviously, the car had to get to Canton PD because you saw it there, correct? Correct. Assume for purposes of my question, the car was turned on, and there's a video of it turning on, <laughs> driving up onto a flatbed tow truck. Yes. That would be ignition cycle. I mean, use your word. Key cycle, ignition cycle, 1163, correct? Again, ignition cycle, key cycles are two different things. Which word do you want me to use? I know. It, if you want to talk it, about key cycles, key cycles. You want to talk about ignition cycles? It's we want to talk about the car gets on. going a up key cycle the ramp. Does not, it does not mean to be turned on. But every single ignition cycle includes a key cycle. You can't have an ignition cycle without a key cycle. If you want to talk about it, just use the key cycles or initial cycles. I'm it's trying fine. I'm trying to make sure this gets out. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make sure that this gets put out the correct way. Every ignition cycle includes a key cycle, correct? In a sense. By definition, it has to, right? It doesn't have to. How do you ignite? It multiple you... different ways. You can have a, an ignition cycle without a key cycle. I don't know how it recorded, but it could ha it could happen. How can Tommy? Can it happen? I'm not this expert witness, but from what I understand, from what the expert witness just said, is yes. And now he's going back on it, saying not all the time. I don't. Wait, if you start your engine like that's the ignition, ignition cycle. Ignition cycle, yes. So how can you have that without a key cycle? Because it has to turn past the on part to go. Run, run, run. I totally agree with you that it should have. But he's those saying two no. Keys. Baldy Locks over here is saying yep. no. That's not true. Okay. Explain that. How could that possibly science? Because a key cycle is when it turns on, not engine running, and then turns off. Okay, so work with me here. Ignition cycles when it turns on. Engine running for two seconds, and then comes off. Okay, so for the two seconds, if it's not on long enough, it might not record one. Okay, let's ignore the two seconds. Okay, that's not what we're doing. Here. Okay, all right. Let's assume that it's an old-fashioned type of key. Okay. Okay. Halfway on, the electricity is on. It's like it used to be called ACC. Yes. Right. Yep. That's oh, key cycle, correct? That's what that was. For that intensive purposes, yes, this vehicle is not a key cycle. So I had a thing. Keep turning. Okay. And that turns the engine on, right? It turns the engine on, correct. It's an ignition cycle, right? Yes. Well, so then turns off. Ignition cycle necessarily includes the precursor key cycle, correct? Even though every key cycle might not include an ignition cycle. Would you agree with that? In that scenario, yes. With that definition, I want to talk about ignition cycles because I don't want to get confused about accessories. What just assume the engine? Okay. Up, right? Okay. If you started your testing at eleven sixty four, then if the engine was turned on, thereby indicating a uh, initiating a key cycle, driving the car onto a flatbed truck and then hauling it over to Canton PD, 
that would be key cycle 1163 in that hypothetical, correct? It could be. Okay. Then going backward from there, if the SUV was, I'm sorry, let me, let me, let me add one event that I just forgot. I don't think you really forgot. It had to get off the tow truck in Canton. Did he say tow truck? And to be driven into the South Pole. Did you see that video? <laughs> no. Being driven in? No. If there was a video showing that the car was actually driven into the Sally Port, that would necessarily be a key cycle, correct? Possibly. Okay, so that would be key cycle 1163. My, my mistake, I was missing one, right? Okay. Before that, if the car was turned on and driven onto the flatbed to get to camp, that would be key cycle 1162. Order, yeah. Correct? We're going back. It's, it's possible. All right. Before that, if the car was started and the car was driven from One Meadows Avenue to Karen Reed's parents' home in Dighton, that would be another key cycle, 1161, correct? They're possible. Before that, if the SUV was started and driven by Miss Reed from the garage at John O'Keefe's house to Jennifer McCabe's house at 5.07 in the morning, that would be another key cycle, correct? 1160, isn't that right? It's possible. And before that, if the SUV was started and driven by Ms. Reed to the waterfall, I'm sorry, from the waterfall to 34 Fairview at approximately 12, 15 AM, that would be another key cycle, 1159, right? It's possible. I wanna be clear. The reason that these numbers <coughs> skip in your diagram, they don't go correct, directly in order, right? Not every single number is in order on this left-hand column because this is only a diagram of when triggering events occur, right? Yes. Something unusual. What just happened? The I, their data, screen. Correct? Yes. And it's clear that from the data, there was no triggering event at key cycle 1159, was there? No. So assuming the driving events that I just told you, right? assuming for purposes of my question. Assuming makes an asshole out of all of us. 1159, driving over to 34 Fairview from the water. Then driving at 5.07 in the morning over to Jenny McCabe's house, 11.60. Then driving to Dighton. 61. Parents house, 11.61. Then the car being seized in Dighton. 62. Actually, the property, 11.62. Then the car being taken off the flatbed and driven 63. into 63. Eleven sixty-three. Your testing starts at eleven sixty-four. That would mean that at eleven sixty-two, that key cycle would include the time in which the proctor had possession of the car. Correct? No. Assuming that. Assuming yes. That. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yes. Because it got on the flat rack at 1162. It's now in police custody on that tow truck. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. So, folks, this is what we're going to do. We're going to stop this for today because I have to let this marinate. And we've been at this for like an hour and something. And we're, we, we, you, uh, this is a lot. Yeah. I told this... you. I told you. Tommy, Jay. break this down thus far why this is so significant barney style it because this guy is killing me small for every time that that key ignition has been turned on and driven those mm -hmm. are actions so it records those actions so it recorded the action of of 11 59 of mm -hmm. her leaving the water place mm -hmm. 11 60 uh what was 11 the bar. Okay. yeah 11 60 is her leaving 
the I bar. I think 59 is the bar or O'Keefe where he dropped off at the thing. 61 is her driving out to her, her family's house. Mm-hmm. No, 60 is 61 is her going back to her place. 62s mm-hmm. where Proctor picked it up with the tow truck. 63 is them coming off the tow truck going into Sally Port. And 64 is where he does all his stuff at. Okay, so why is that significant with the key cycles? Because it shows what? It would show times. It would show the timeline of where everything was, where it got cut on and where it comes off. It shows a timeline. Let's let's hear this again. Okay, let's hear it one more time. Every single number is in order on this left-hand column because this is only a diagram of when triggering events occur, right? Yes. Triggering events. That's the key. Okay. Something unusual about the operation of the vehicle, correct? Yes. And it's clear that from the data, there was no triggering event at key cycle 1159. Nothing. No, which okay. is when she dropped off O'Keefe. Okay. After the bar. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So assuming the driving events that I just told you, right? Assuming for purposes of my question, that the driving events started at 1159, driving over to 34 Fairview from the water plant. Okay. Then driving at 507 in the morning over to Jen McCabe's house. 1160. 1160. Driving See what I'm talking about? Then the car being seized in Dyke by Trooper Proctor, 1162. Then the car being taken off the flatbed and driven into the Sally Port by Canton, 1163. Your testing starts at 1164. That would mean that at 1162, Oh, there is nothing. So there was no triggering event at 1159. Mm -hmm. No triggering event at 1159 means there was nothing that happened. Nothing significant in reverse at 22 miles an hour or. Okay. But if you notice the. And then at 11, the key cycle 1160 is the next morning when she's over at, at Jen McCabe's. five o'clock goes to Jen McKay's at five o'clock. And then the next key 61, cycle. 61, she goes to her parents' to her house. Parents. And then the next key cycle is when Trooper Proctor has it and puts it up on the flatbed. Or he yeah. seized it. Yes, he seized it. My damn. Trooper Proctor had possession. No. Assuming that, assuming my hypothetical. I would have honestly answered that with, I don't know if he had it at that time. But you he did. It was in the report. I, but you get what I'm saying? I would have said that at that keystroke. I don't know if he had it at that time. I'd have just kept it like that. That's, but by saying no, you works, just look right? like a dumbass. Well, other or you would end up looking like a liar and you just perjured yourself on the stand if you said he didn't know. But he's supposed to be the expert witness, so he knows where all the keystrokes are. Yes. Then what? If that's hypothetically how it works, then yes. Hypothetically how it works. It's supposed to work like that. That's It's called mechanics and science. And what people don't know, um, we said this be, uh, when you and I were talking before, the defense attorney, Alan Jackson, is not only a brilliant criminal defense attorney, but he was a district attorney in Los Angeles. And before that, he was um, in the Air Force. He was a mechanic in the Air Force. So this and this guy's a boss. I mean, he knows he's really smart and he's a professor of law at both Pepperdine University and Loyola. So. It's not like he's a ding dong, you know? June 9th, 2022, you were asked by a grand jury whether you knew or had done any scientific testing to determine the distance a body would actually travel struck by a vehicle. You remember that? Not that specifically. <clears throat> not in that way. <laughs> what? Do you remember answering that you had What not, way then, guy? Paraphrasing, that you had not done all the, you hadn't finished your report yet. 
Why don't Why don't you show him? He said he didn't remember it that way. Oh my God! He just adjusted the collar thing. He is so uncomfortable. Oh, he's 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 not feeling. Oh, he shifted the tie, and he's breathing uh, directly in the mic again. Oh shit! Every time he breathes into the mic like that, I think he's like angry or mad. Like, I think he's just looking at the clock and and the prosecution. Why aren't they objecting? <laughs> Do something. Save me. Question about it. It's probably informative. That we were pausing. Hmm? Well, <laughs> let's okay. finish this. Let's finish this. Statement. Is it almost over? No. Okay. Well, then we're going to pause soon. Let's finish right after the statement. Because he's got to read his statement okay. and then. Yep. Yes. You were asked, does that remind you that you were asked by a grand juror if you could calculate how far a body would move having been struck by a vehicle? Yes. And you indicated, quote, yeah, there's, I mean, there's certain calculations we can do with that to figure out if you say if the car backed up, hit somebody, and then they go a certain <clears throat> amount of distance, and it's based on miles per hour, the speed of the vehicle, the striking vehicle, and stuff. <gasps> Remember saying that? And stuff. Tommy, if you and I, when we were, in, if, if we had ever put in a counseling statement, an affidavit, a report, an assessment, an after action report, clinical note, what have you, while we were in the middle, in the mi military, if we would have put and stuff, we would have lost our stripes. Yep. We because we, we, we got to be, be detailed as possible. We can't we just say be, and stuff. We, we would have, have to, to beat our face. We'd actually have to describe exactly what it is to the T. Yes. What did you mean by stuff? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna you stop right there. Hey, you better <laughs> know because you're the expert. It's your <laughs> testimony. <laughs> Hold on. Like, it's your testimony. You it's not anybody face. else's testimony. I want you to see his face. No, I'm telling you, he just gave up on the world. Yeah, on the world. <laughs> just watch his face. Figure out if you say if the car backed up, hit somebody, and then they go a certain <clears throat> amount of distance, and it's based on miles per hour, the speed of the vehicle, the striking vehicle, and stuff. Remember saying that? Yes. <laughs> he kind of laughed. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what Ann's stuff is. Hey, ah. so. Tommy, we're, we're so, okay. So here's the deal, people. I can only handle so much dumb. And oh, let me take that down. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I can only handle so much dumb. And then I have to say no more my brain hurts. Um, it's too much, you know? So if I was watching this, if, let's say I know nothing, nothing at all. Okay. And this is the expert and the cornerstone and everything is laid out. And I didn't hear or watch this, or I don't even know who Karen Reed is based off of this guy's testimony thus far. I'm done acquitted, not guilty, case dismissed with prejudice, whatever it is, who it is, innocent. Because this guy, whoa, he doesn't math. He doesn't mechanic. Hey, he, everybody else gave him the answers, so he just factored in the answers from their answers. Yeah. He doesn't science, clearly. And he uses words like stuff that he has no idea what he was referring to. And stuff. I don't know. And stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to have to pick this up tomorrow, people. There is hey, no. I do tomorrow. want tomorrow. I do want to uh, show today's stuff tomorrow. Voir too. Dire. Uh, yes. Today yes. there was a voir dire. Um, what happened is that. The prosecution filed a motion to exclude. Uh, 
Yes. And they don't want to include the defense's expert witnesses. Now, I think the judge is being very cautious. She in that she's allowing a voir dire because what the prosecution is alleging is that there's a rule 14 violation, meaning they didn't disclose this in amount of the proper amount of time, blah, 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 blah. But the reason why I want to watch it is this is the prosecution's expert witness. I watched the voir dire today. Those are real win. Uh, night hey, and day. Like she guts people. Does she yeah. not? Like I was like, but I honestly, when I brought up to Mel earlier, uh, so everybody knows, you know, I have PTSD, so my days blend together. So I literally was like, no, Mel, it happened yesterday. It happened yesterday. So it yeah. should have been on this film. And she's like, it happened this morning. And I'm like, no, but yeah. oh yeah. man, I was I like, to... yo. So oh, I yeah. can't wait. That's I, why I, I want to see it. I mean, I may pop on later and finish this one out myself or I can invite you on or you want to do it yourself, whatever. But we definitely I have to get to the voir dire tomorrow. And I do want to finish out um, Knucklehead's expert testimony just with the cross, because if it can get any worse. I have to see it to believe it. Because I don't think that it can. I think he just tanked his, <laughs> the prosecution's case, but who knows? So until then, everybody, you know, we are a new channel. We're starting out. Um, we have other content that we've recorded that we're going to get to. Um, but until then, you know, please support our channel and feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. Until Definitely. next time. Peace. We Okay, so, I was just I was trying to think of something witty. And but I got nothing. Time, hey, if you don't know it, don't say you're an expert on the stand. Yeah, you're gonna I know, look it like is a, what it is. You're gonna look dumb to dumb dumb. <laughs> All right. Until then, <laughs> we'll spoke at y'all later. Peace.